Yeah, yeah. Stuart Lowe leaving the ground after one final lap at Moorabbin. It was to his final training session with the Saints uh, earlier today as he prepares for a farewell to a career that has seen him become one of the club's greats. Tomorrow night at Colonial Stadium, Stewie will play one last game against Melbourne, knowing full well that each mark, each kick and each goal may well be his last. And he's come in tonight to talk to us about what's been an amazing career. Stewie, how are you? Pretty naked, Francis. It's been a, it's been a hectic couple of days, but uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, it all. And uh, yeah, the boys gave me a great send off today. And uh, yeah, just seeing that footage again, uh, it was uh, it, it probably didn't really hit me today until I actually uh, walked up that race one last time and uh, the realization of that this is going to be the last time I'm actually training with the boys. How did that feel? I mean, give us some sense of what that's like. Uh, Obviously very emotional, it's something you, you're not, on, not only have I played for 17 years, it's something I dreamt about doing and uh, for, for all my childhood I was fortunate enough to play Little League at St Kilda and, uh, and grew up uh, as a one-eyed mad uh, Collingwood supporter and uh, it was a real dream come true so for it to come to an end now, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough but uh, in saying that uh, I know the time's right and I'm, I'm really comfortable with the decision. Now the players had a bit of a presentation to you uh, this week as well, what was they actually giving you or what was said to you? Yeah, um, obviously uh, there's going to be a fair bit said over the next couple of days but, uh, but Rob, uh, Rob Harvey and, and a few of the boys uh, decided to get together and uh, we've actually, uh, actually cancelled our footy trip this year in, in preparation uh, for a, a huge year next year and uh, the boys really felt that it wasn't appropriate given the season we've had and uh, They've, uh, they've got together and, and chipped in and, and got me some uh, terrific gifts and uh, one, uh, one is a, uh, a huge photo of, of all the boys uh, autographed and uh, you know, that'll be uh, hung up uh, with, uh, with real pride uh, when I get it back home. Take it right back to 1986, round nine, your first game of AFL football. What do you remember about the first of the 320 odd games that so far you've played? Oh, there was there was fair to him. There was not a blade of grass at Moorabbin that particular <laughs> uh, that particular Saturday afternoon, and uh, I uh, I lined up at full forward and uh, fortunate enough to uh, take a grab uh, just before the end of the first quarter, and the siren had gone, and I was literally uh, probably 25 or 30 metres out, and uh, I just kicked the biggest mongrel punt. It just <laughs> made the distance, so uh, it was a goal with my first kicking league footy, which is a real bonus. And uh, spent the rest of the day up at centre half forward playing on Dennis. Carroll, who uh, gave me nothing but uh, but had a hard time, and so it was a it was a real uh, eye opener. And uh, you know, we we just got pipped that that day, but uh, yeah, it was a real uh, a real eye opener to AFL for you. Well, it was the first of 320 games you've played so far, which has put you in a very elite company, as we see here on the list of most uh, games played by players. Michael Tuck at the top there with that remarkable tally of 426. Now, if you were to play tomorrow, Stewie, 321 would just push you uh, right up alongside. The man that many think was the greatest player to ever have played the game, Ted Witten. So when you think back to that first game and that mongrel punt, that's a remarkable achievement, isn't it? And uh, do you get a sense of just how uh, amazing that is when you sort of see that sort of statistic? Yeah, I, I uh, wasn't aware of the fact that uh, that EJ had played 321, so uh, that's, that's fantastic. I spent a lot of time... Uh, wearing the big V jumper when he was involved and it was huge and he was a great influence on my career coming through and uh, yeah look there's, there's no doubt when I started uh, you know playing 300 games was the last thing I was just concentrating on on trying to get a kick and, uh, and getting out there the following week. Who would have been the best player that you played with at St Kilda because you have played with some, some superstars and some champions but who would you nominate? Yeah look that's a really tough question um, I suppose just for sheer brilliance on the field and, and the ability to win games um, you couldn't go past Plugger, um, he was absolutely awesome and uh, and one thing uh, in his uh, in his Brownlow year he was probably our best trainer something that he wasn't renowned for, he really set a benchmark that year and was absolutely awesome and he'd be really f uh, closely followed by uh, Robbie Harvey and Nathan Burke, both two great mates of mine who just con consistency alone has been uh, second to none. With Plugger I guess it must have been at times like being in a, an action movie, you didn't know where the thrills and spills were coming from next because there were times when he was uh, so awesome that uh, he seemed to take the entire game apart on his own. Yeah, look, there's no doubt there was a there was a, a game. Uh, I think it was uh, against Hawthorne at Waverley uh, a long, long time ago. Now I uh, I taken a mark in the goal square, literally a metre out, and um, 
I don't know why I handballed it to him. He kicked the goal. He kicked. That, ended up kicking twelve <laughs> that day. But uh, but um, yeah, look, he, he was awesome. He, he really was. Uh, it was just to kick it up high to him, and uh, it worked really well with me playing out centre half forward and plug it in and full forward. We look at the next generation of players who have to uh, pick up where you've left off with St Kilda and start to show leadership, uh, particularly in the tall man department. And many people look to Spider Everett as the person that now needs to assume that role. What do you make of the year that Spider's had and, and his potential to become? A real club great because many people feel frustrated that he, he's almost there but he's still got a lot of work to do to really prove himself. Would you say something to Spider before you leave in terms of what he needs to do to sort of achieve something at that level? I'm, I'm great mates with, with Pete and uh, a lot of people uh, don't realise, again, he, he's one of, uh, one of our hardest trainers and uh, he's already sat down with, uh, with our physical people and, uh, and set about a program for next year. He's bitterly disappointed with the season he's had, but uh, you know, we, we can't forget the fact that he missed 10 games, um, which, is a, which is a huge part of uh, the season. And um, he came back and he was playing some reasonable football. Um, OK, he got towed up against uh, Stephen King and, and Matty Primus, but uh, they're two of the you know, absolute champion ruckmen. Uh, he'd been carrying niggles uh, over the last six weeks. Um, no excuses, though. He knows his form's down. Um, yeah, I definitely would love to spend a bit of time with him next year and, and, uh, and work on a few things. He knows he's got to improve his marking. He's got to become a better pack marker than he has. He's got a, a huge engine, and aerobically he's, uh, he's right up there with our best runners at the club, but uh, he knows he needs to take a few more pack marks. Well, somebody with amazing aerobic capacity, probably the best ever in the game, many people believe, is Robert Harvey, and uh, you must have... Uh, seen some stuff on the football field playing alongside him which must have left you marvelling at the capacity of a man to, to do the sorts of things he does. Yeah, look, I remember Harves when he started uh, way back you know, in the early eight or mid-80s um, playing alongside me in the half-forward line. Uh, you know, this kid from Seaford would bob up and get um, 10 or 12 possessions in a quarter and, and, and would go missing and, and like we're talking about a 16, 17-year-old kid. Uh, he's just worked tirelessly and, and he is the benchmark when it comes to uh, uh, getting yourself right to play football. Uh, I see him and, and Shane Crawford as, as the two players that stand out from that respect. There's no harder trainer down at the club and it's, uh, it's a true testament to what he's achieved. one 300 25 is the number to call us here at White Line Fever if you want to talk to Stewie Lowe. We're talking to him about his career as he gets ready for his last game with the Saints this weekend. Now, no doubt Robert Harvey would give anything to be out there with his old comrade tomorrow night. This is what he had to say about playing alongside Stewie Lowe. He's actually a bit overweight to start with, believe it or not. But he's—he's um, he's really, I mean, he's worked so hard at his game, and um, to play th over 300 games of league footy um, is a fantastic effort. <laughs> Stewie Lowe in a characteristic pose alongside Mick Martin there. We've seen that a lot over the 17 years of his career with the Saints. And as the season draws to a close, so does the career of a man who has taken more marks than any other player going around in the AFL at the moment. And Stewie Lowe's here to talk to us about the big night tomorrow night against Melbourne. Now, Stewie, you're somebody who's renowned to have uh, got the most out of your body over the years. I mean, the discipline required to uh, have played 300 games of football, particularly in this day and age, must be enormous because there won't be too many blokes who do that in the future. I think it's going to get tougher and tougher, Francis. There's no doubt about that. I think the expectations and, and just the amount of media mm. attention uh, and scrutiny placed on the players uh, is huge. Uh, physically, we're probably doing less uh, on the training track um, throughout the year than we used to. Um, but I think um, the burnout factor is going to be a huge part uh, in the future, just with the amount of football that's, uh, that's being played and uh, the amount of scrutiny everyone's under. It's a real pressure cooker environment. Now, you've had uh, a lot go on in your career, and there was a while there where your wife Anne was fighting breast cancer, which she successfully fought. I mean, did that change your perspective on the game? And did, in a way, that give you uh, a chance to renew yourself and to push on for, for more footy because you had an opportunity maybe to realise just how, how fortunate you were in many regards? Yeah, without a doubt, it was look, it was it was the toughest year for for uh, for for ourselves as a family. There's no doubt about that. But um, yeah, we've come through that, and uh, now that we're on the other side of it, we look back and uh, we really feel that we're a stronger unit, and uh, it's uh, it's taught us all to really appreciate life and and smell the roses. That's our that's our new catch catch cry, and uh, you know sometimes uh, both Annie and myself. Uh, get caught up in, in wanting to achieve and, and, and wanting to be successful in, in whatever we do and uh, and uh, we've really learnt just to step back uh, you know, uh, 
more often than not and uh, and just really look around and appreciate what we've got. Now when you're out on the footy field they used to send the best out after you. Who was the toughest that you ever had to come across when you stood there at centre half forward? I've uh, I've always wanted to be honest and say, uh, say to Steve Silvani but I, I said to myself uh, a long time ago that uh, I would, uh, I would never say uh, the player who was still playing and uh, you know, just thinking that it might have given him an edge, not that uh, he needed much of an edge, but um, yeah, there's no doubt uh, Soss was, was uh, an awesome uh, player and uh, whilst Plugger probably got him uh, off and early, um, sort of I, I started to get, a, get him towards uh, the end of our careers and uh, we had some great battles, but uh, he, he's, probably, uh, he's probably well on top. Well, he's here now with us on the phone talking to us, the fullback of the century. Stephen Silvani, how are you? Good, friend. Francis and yourself? Not too bad. Stewie's here as well. Yeah, g'day Stu. G'day Soss. Well done, a fantastic career. Yeah, thanks mate. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night, that's for sure. Yeah, you've been a sensational player and uh, I know how difficult it is to, uh, I guess, play over 300 games and it, uh, you go through a hell of a lot over that time and to be able to carry some of the injuries you've carried and to play the, the level you have, uh, you've been a sensational player, not only for St Kilda, but uh, of course through the AFL. Now, Soss, did you used to have to occasionally take a deep breath when you had to go and stand, Stu, and think this is going to be pretty tough? How did you go about trying to stop the bloke pulling in 12 marks in a game? Well, it was always a worry. He was a, he's a huge man, I can tell you, and uh, once he was in front of you, he was fairly uh, difficult to uh, get a spoil on. Often, he's got these massive hands, as you could appreciate, and often uh, he'd clamp his hands around that ball and you'd actually hit the ball as hard as you can. It, but it, uh, for some reason, it didn't uh, dislodge at all. But uh, listen, he was uh, very difficult purely uh, because not only that he was so big and strong, but he knew how to play footy. And uh, as uh, Stewie said just before, we had some great jewels. And I guess it sort of stemmed back to our our school days where we actually played some school footy against each other. There's a great story here. Is it true that there was a broken jaw that you were carrying, Stewie, or that you got in the game against Sauce, which might have saved you from becoming a hawk and uh, actually meant that you went to St Kilda? Tell us that, yeah. I actually, I actually had signed up uh, as a junior with Hawthorne and uh, and broke my jaw in a motorbike accident and. Uh, and uh, Alan Jeans had been out to see a couple of my games and uh, it was my second game back and we were playing Marcelin out at Marcelin and uh, obviously Soss uh, was, was the big thing back then and um, I've, I've got a sneaking suspicion he was either playing centre-half forward, he's probably playing centre-half back and they sent me out to tag him as a centre-half forward and I've run out in the field being you know, six foot three and overweight back then and uh, had this huge massive uh, black helmet on my head, felt like a dill but uh, they, they they reckon it was going to uh, protect me. Well, he's, uh, he sort of whacked me in the first quarter and then actually throwing the helmet away. But he didn't actually, didn't actually rape my jaw, but um, I, like to, I like to colour the story. <laughs> Look, Soss, thanks for being with us and, uh, and having a chat about uh, what it was like to play on the big fella. Uh, thank you, and uh, good luck for the weekend, shoot. Thanks, Soss. I really appreciate the words, no worries, mate. I look forward to catching up and having a beer with you. I'll see you at the grand final uh, luncheon, too. Yeah, certainly, mate. <laughs> okay, mate. Stephen Silvani, fullback of the century, talking to us about having to stand Stewie Lowe in quite a number of games whilst he was playing with Carlton. Plenty of calls coming through. one 65 65 25 if you want to have a chat with us. Paul's with us. G'day, Paul. G'day, Francis. I just wanted to uh, congratulate Stewie on a magnificent career. He's been absolutely fantastic for the Saints. Um, I wanted to thank him uh, for sticking with St Kilda. I mean, especially he had the opportunity to go out to the Dockers and uh, earn the big bucks, but um, fortunately he stayed with us and took us to a grand final. And um, I, I was just hoping, uh, well, I was just wondering whether he'd reconsidered his retirement. I mean, we've got the young stars coming on, especially with Cozzy and, and Nicky Rewalt, who who, uh, who will probably fill the role that he'll leave behind, but they just quite haven't bulked up as yet, and uh, would he stick around for another season just to get these boys up and running and uh, to take over the role that he's going to leave behind? Well, it's an interesting one. It must be tempting because you, you must be able to see that uh, there's a lot of potential there, but I guess waking up on a Monday after a game and feeling like you're uh, not able to get a bed is enough of a sign that you probably shouldn't. <laughs> That's that's the real key, Francis and uh, and Paul. That that question's been asked uh, quite a few times over the last couple of weeks. And uh, oh, look, I, I think it's right for a, for a couple of reasons. I think it's a real good opportunity for me to pass over the baton to the Justin Kaczynskis and the Nick Rewalts and Stephen Bakers and Stephen Milnes, all these young guys up and coming. Um, you know, it, it's time for them to take that next step and. Uh, 
and secondly, uh, as Francis alluded to, the body's, uh, the body's slowly falling apart and uh, whilst uh, you know, I'm feeling a million dollars this week uh, and did the week before, um, my knee just for no, uh, for, for, for no reason at all blew up uh, against Sydney and uh, it's just one of those things, it's very hard to manage and it's a real juggling act and to play this game against the likes of uh, Nick Rewald and these up and coming champions, you just can't afford to, uh, to carry anything. Good on you, Paul. Thanks for your call. Scotty's a Bombers fan and he's given us a call here at White Line Fever. G'day, mate. Hey, g'day, uh, Stewie. Just a lot of my family's probably a diehard St Kilda supporter, so I sort of kept a keen eye on them over the years. But um, how do you look back on 97 as a year personally? Uh, do you sort of see it as a big disappointment as you didn't go all the way? Or will you just look, at it, look back on it as a great time you had with the boys and some of the best footy you guys have probably played? Yeah, look, it's it's a difficult one. Um, I, can, I can probably answer that in two ways. I'm extremely proud of what we achieved in '97, and, uh, and and look to that year as uh, as a year where we we turned our fortunes around. I think we were four one, or four losses, one win at, after five uh, five games early on, and we really turned it around and strung twelve or thirteen games together and uh, and got the playoff in a grand final. Um, I'm not going to get another opportunity. Uh, I can't change the fact that we lost that game. Um, so yeah, look, I'm extremely disappointed about that, but um, just extremely uh, proud of what the boys did and what we what we achieved. Thanks for your call, Scotty. Well, Nathan Burke has played alongside Stewie for nearly all of his career, and though he won't be out there tomorrow night, he's looking forward to Stewie paying the boys a visit or two in the next couple of years. Uh, somebody will say, "Oh, that bloke, they used to play here," and uh, we, we won't believe him because he'll probably be bald and fat and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> won't be able to fit through the door, but. That's pretty confronting. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, and uh, you know, I think you know, you see footage like that, and it really hits home. And uh, yeah, I've shed quite a few tears over the last couple of days, and uh, I can appreciate what Sean was going through then. Uh, you want to thank a lot of people, and there's a lot of people behind the scenes that don't get the accolades that uh, that are really there for you, um, you know, through thick and thin. So. Uh, you know, whilst he's paying tribute to, to his wife, uh, he's probably got lots of other people as well he needs to thank. Well, he's probably getting ready for a big game tonight at Colonial Stadium, just to cap it all off. If you want to join us on our viewer poll, you need to go to the AFL website. AFL.com.au is where you need to head. And this was the question that we put last night, and uh, it went straight to the heart of the matter in Sydney. In 2003, who should be coach? Ruse, Wallace or somebody else? And it seems that Paul Ruse is the overwhelming favourite uh, to continue in the coaching job with the Swans. Terry Wallace only jagging 19% of voters who got online last night. So Paul Ruse, very much a favourite son in Sydney, no surprises there. AFL.com.au is where you need to head if you want to answer this question. Where will the Saints finish next year? Well, 11 to 16 is where they've been loitering for the last few years, but much expected. Do they finish 6 to 10 or in the top 5 next year, given all the players who are coming online and of course today Stewie signing on three players who are considered to be the future of the club Nick Rewalt, Justin Kozitski and Lenny Hayes all committing their future to the St Kilda Football Club for the next three years so as, uh, as you're going out the exit door three guys who are committing themselves to the club it must be a great feeling there at the moment yeah look there's no doubt this there's, there's a real sense of excitement around the club and uh, you know they're three quality men as there are um, at, 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 the, at the club and um, yeah, it's great to see that them, that the three of them put uh, pen to paper for a, for a long-term career, so they obviously believe that uh, there's a real future down there. Peter's given us a call. G'day, Peter. G'day, fellas. Uh, Stewie, congratulations on a fantastic career, mate. Uh, you've definitely been one of the game's biggest names. Uh, what I want to know, if you had your time over, would you have preferred, oh, not preferred, but would you have liked to have been an Essendon or an Adelaide with the flags and things like that, or are you quite happy with how it's all gone? Peter, I can quite honestly state that uh, I wouldn't swap anything for the world. It's uh, you know I've uh, I've said quite a few times that um, you know I've played football uh, not only for you know personal glory and premierships, but to to establish relationships and and meet some good people. And uh, you know I've done that down at St Kilda. I've uh, I've made some lifelong friends. And when I went into the system at St Kilda, I was a pimply face, you know, overweight, as Berkey and Hales have said. <laughs> Um, you know, 17 year old kid and I think I've come out a real rounded uh, uh, you know, young man at the other end or older, older man. So uh, you know, I, I, 
I can only thank the footy club for that and, uh, and the supporters and everyone have been fantastic. So I'm extremely proud to have stayed at the One Club. Was it important to you to stay at the One Club? Because there must have been times, and uh, we heard somebody talk about earlier the fact that there was an occasion when you came out of contract and Fremantle offered you an opportunity to go. Did you get close? Oh, look, I'd, I'd, I'd be lying if I, uh, I answer that uh, any other way than saying yes, I, I considered all options. Uh, but really when it uh, came down to it, it was a very easy decision to stay. And, uh, and one that really sits well with me now and it's probably not until you get to this stage in your career that you really appreciate what you have done and the fact that you have uh, stayed loyal to the club and uh, it's one thing that I think is, uh, is missing in the game and uh, hopefully with the young guys that have come through and are coming through they'll really see the importance of that. Is it still valued by the players? I mean is there kudos in being a one club player? Absolutely, I, I, I really feel so. I'll, I'll, um, you know, there's circumstances which uh, don't allow a player to stay, and I can cite Jamie Shanahan as one who's a great mate of mine, and um, you know he was he was forced into a situation, and, and that happens all the time. But um, you know, and it is becoming a professional elite job and business that we're doing. But um, you can't take the passion out of what we do, and I think that's really important. Robbo, how are you? Yeah, how are you, fellas? Not too bad. Uh, love the show. Thank you very much. I'm up in Queensland, so we don't get a lot of AFL live. So I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And, uh, Stewie, congratulations on a fantastic career, mate. Uh, tremendous effort, but also on the way you've conducted yourself uh, in your personal life and gone about uh, your career. It's been tremendous to see a guy like yourself uh, go about his uh, job the way you've done it and a real credit to your family and uh, uh, what you've done. My question is, Stewie, uh, having followed St Kettle for so many uh, years uh, and having the... Uh, the uh, uh, opportunity to see Stan Alves and his passion in coaching the uh, St Kilda club. How have you found Grant Thomas and uh, his radical ideas of changing captains regularly uh, with regards to your career and uh, uh, who you thought might have been your best coach throughout your career? Yeah, there's, there's a few questions then. I'll, I'll try to answer them all. Um, Grant Thomas, uh, I've only really got to know Grant over the last two years and, and I cannot speak uh, more highly of the man. Um, he took over under under quite quite trying circumstances last year, and he's conducted himself, uh, you know, really really well. Uh, he's uh, he's in, or the entire playing group has embraced him. Um, yes, he's had a few radical ideas with with the captaincy, and we were just talking about them before off air. I really feel uh, that it, it will work, and it will nurture and and and. Uh, and bring along a lot of the younger players, which I think is really important. Well, Stewie, it's going to be a big night tomorrow night. Uh, are you feeling OK about it? You, you're all fired up? Absolutely. Look, I'm really, <laughs> really excited about it, really looking forward to it. And, uh, look, there's a lot of people to thank. I won't thank them all tonight. Annie, uh, you've been absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Um, all the guys, uh, let's have a big one tomorrow night. Well, there are just four more quarters to go, Stewie. Thank you for a fantastic career and uh, have a great game tomorrow night. That's all for White Line Fever. We'll catch you again on Monday.